Thank you so very much for, for, for joining the session today. Um, so this talk is I, a tiger's guide to Dungeons and Dragons. I have no idea what expectation you have. <laughs> and um, it, I'm really surprised that so many of you showed up, and I'm really glad, actually. Um, let, let, let's get started with a brief introduction of myself. And this, start, this slide is normally what I call a short summary of myself in logos. Uh, I'm a, res a researcher, data scientist, I've been working in, in academia for many years. Now I am DevRel in Anaconda, and I'm also a fellow of the Software Sustainability Institute. That's the serious part of myself, the nerdy, giggy part of myself. I am into uh, Python quite a lot. I actually uh, help organizing many conferences, Year of SciPy, which by the way is in Basel in a couple of weeks. Um, Python, PyCon Italy, PyData events, also Play Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons. So this is who I am. Uh, I, I couldn't wear my Darth Vader mask to come, but I have my bag to compensate. And that's it. So this is where I am. Sorry. Um, so let's get started. And let's just start by saying that we have a D&D &D problem. And in particular, Let's say we have, we, we, we're about to embark in this mission. We are a mage. We have to fight this green dragon uh, hidden in this uh, ancient castle. Um, and in particular, the mission we're about to embark is that we have to find this dragon and slay the dragon, poor dragon. And, um, but we've been um, empowered by an extra uh, set of skills. Um, we know that we have to cross this path. Uh, we have to go through this maze. We have the map. We have to essentially find a way to reach the dragon, which is hiding in the forest, and, and cast a fireball. Sorry, this is very nerdy language, I know. But, um, and in case you haven't noticed, uh, this map is essentially Prague Castle. So we did have indeed a DOD problem in Prague. Um, so going back, seriously. What we have to do is essentially find a way, very efficiently, this is the extra skills we've been, we've been gathered uh, by this, this um, uh, ancient potion, Pythonic, um, to go through this maze in a very efficient way, and uh, so find a way into, into the, the forest, and also, so maybe the shortest way to get to the dragon, and um, essentially cast a spell, and this spell is, is been, so this area here is, is actually the forest. So the royal garden, I think, I gather from, from the map. So we want to increase the power of, of our magic. And by, so we want to find exactly the spot in which we want to um, cast our magic, increasing uh, the effect. So um, in other terms, talking algorithms now, uh, what we probably want to do is something like shortest path to reach the dragon. This is technically referred to as SP, shortest single, uh, single source, shortest path. Um, we probably want to do some, some um, um, traverse of the maids. Um, this, is, this is a very confusing name. It's technically, it's just historically called breath first search, even though sometimes it's just a mo moving through the, the graph, so it's, there's no search uh, necessarily, um, to maximize fireball effect. And we can think of many, many other algorithms. This is just to excuse to, uh, to talk about graphs. And the, this, 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 the following slides are essentially uh, taken from this wonderful talk, I absolutely recommend it, from Guy Rose. Um, and in case, when I mentioned uh, please take a picture. This is really fantastic. Uh, the, the talk is called D&D and Graph Databases. He is, uh, take, is talking about graph databases. I am not, but I would have been, uh, been borrowed some of, the, of uh, his slides. And in case when I said uh, graph, this is what you had in mind, you're still in time to probably go to another talk because this is not <laughs> what we're going to talk about. So talking about graphs, graphs are identified by vertices. And these vertices, or sometimes edges, can be, uh, sorry, uh, nodes, uh, can be connected by edges or arcs. Um, the terminology changes in literature depending you're considering um, whether these connections are directed or not. Um, I'll get to that. But uh, you can have isolated nodes 
or connected nodes. Uh, if, if every single node is reachable, is, the graph is said to be connected. If, um, if essentially you have a, uh, this subgraph here is, is also referred to as fully connected graph because there's always a path from each node. Um, as I was saying, graph can be undirected or can be directed, meaning that you have a direction of, of, f to, to follow when you're moving from one node to another one. And the last thing to say, a couple of, couple of more things to say. Um, sometimes we can talk about degrees uh, of nodes. This is a property of nodes. You can have, if the graph is directed, like in this case, you have an uh, inbound degree, so the number of edges getting into the node. In this case, it's one. And you have degree of three, meaning, um, in this case, meaning you have uh, two outbound degree in this node and one inbound. The out degree, of course, is how many uh, edges are actually um, starting from the node. And just to be clear, when you're dealing with graph, anything can be connected to anything. So you can always have situations like this. And situations can even be more complicated. Anyway, enough with theory. Prom I promise. Um, and also because we still have our D&D problem. And we were saying that what we want to do is to look for shortest path or breadth of search. This is just an excuse to talk about these two algorithms in specific, specifically. Now let's talk briefly about graph abstractions in Python. And to be clear, this is a very interesting problem, at least to what I define interesting. Um, it's... It, there's a lot of theory behind it, and it's certainly not a three-way problem for many reasons. Pythonically, uh, this is an old page of documentation, um, and it, there's a Python pattern to implement graphs. So it's still in the legacy set of the documentation, but it's a very interesting read. Um, so in the, in the following slides, we try to um, think or like a reason together and please feel free to, uh, I don't know, um, provide your own um, uh, comment on what we're going to say about what we can do in, how, or, um, in Python to implement a graph. We can start by adjacency lists. So we have like a set of nodes from zero to seven in this case, and then we represent our graph N as a list of other lists. And each list is essentially the, the nodes that each node can be, is connected to. This is pretty, pretty easy. We can do uh, slightly better uh, in case every single connection has a weight or a value, whatever you want to call it. We can have a adjacency di dictionary. So it's a list of dictionaries, every single essentially um, um, uh, reference for each node is a dictionary containing the node as a key and the value. Um, at the weight as value. Um, we can even have a, a more flexible approach. This is still on the Python basic data structure. This is what I'm talking about. Um, you can have a graph, and in the, the previous implementation we're considering was considering nodes as numbers. We can have labels on each node, so it's not necessarily numbers. So this is a gen more general approach. We have a dictionary in which each key is the label uh, to the node, and the list um, uh, of corresponding uh, reachable nodes. Even better, we can do um, same abstraction, but this time we use a set. The difference in, the, in what I'm trying to say here, the, 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 the multiple implementation, and this is still very basic, uh, I, sorry, very basic idea we can come up with, uh, can vary depending on what you want to do with graphs. And so this is the kind of message I'm trying to, uh, to uh, get across. Um, depending on what you have to do with the graph, e implementation may vary. So when you have sets, for example, and you're looking for specific, and uh, you're adding a node, you're absolutely sure that you won't have repetitions. So this is one feature you have immediately for the data structure you have. So this is the kind of thing we try to uh, think about here. Um, another probably quite popular um, 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 uh, representation, abstraction for a graph, is adjacency matrix. In this case, we don't bother in um, a storing just the, the piece of information related to the, every single node. We store everything. And in case there's no connection, we can have a zero here, meaning there's no connection from this node to this other node, uh, or 
Uh, and if we have weights, for example, or any information on, on the node, we can put directly numbers. So either than zero, one to be like, to indicate something like there is a connection, there is no connection, we can actually do um, uh, numbers. And in case the graph is in undirected, the, this matrix is essentially uh, symmetric, so we can store just the triangular matrix, so we don't need to store everything. Um, in case you're not entirely familiar with this um, representation, this is a simple graph. We have an, uh, the, the multiple nodes. Um, we have weights, so um, uh, or the edges here, and uh, yeah, the, ma the, the matrix will be symmetric. Uh, the row in this matrix represents the outgoing edges, and the column for this node represents the inbound edges. Um, has to be said that. Apart from standard Python, we do have alternatives, and probably you know prob probably know already where I'm going. Um, graph can be represented as a sparse adjacency matrix, and indeed SciPy as a sparse package. And in this particular case, this is even more clear that you, depending on what you need to do with your representation, you have to choose carefully what sparse implementation you want to use. So SciPy, uh, this is all sparse matrix class in, in SciPy, so you have multiple formats, multiple strategies to implement sparsity. And in fact, in the documentation, you can say that if you need to construct a matrix sufficiently, you will probably want to do a list of lists, which is LIL, by the way. A list of lists, for in, in case you're missing this, this is exactly what we're talking here. This is the list of lists, nothing different. Um, or um, you, can, uh, you can use coordinate uh, format here. Um, but this is uh, strongly discouraged to use NumPy directly on this format. You have to convert them first. In case you need to perform manipulations, such as inversions, operations, algebraic, algebraic operations, there's another format. This is a, a comma-separated um, column sparse, uh, column and um, column uh, sparse row, or something like that. Sorry, I don't remember exactly. Um, just to be clear, this is what um, scikit-learn supports internally. Uh, so whenever you have sparse data, you can pass on uh, matrices in this format, because this is the format where you can use um, arithmetic operations, as you would do in machine learning. And if you have to convert this format into another format, like COO, for example, it's linear time. So it really depends on what you have to do. No format is, is always perfect. And you have, to, you have to choose carefully. And when you have to do both the two things, you have to convert from one format to the other. And of course, probably the best solution we have in Python is using data abstractions. And NetworkX is the, um, is the package we want to use when we work with graphs. Uh, this is the implementation of graph in network X. Uh, in, in there's also digraph, which is directed graph, multigraph, multidigraph, and so on and so forth. So um, network X already provides um, abstractions in Python to work with graphs. Are you all familiar with network X? Fantastic. So I guess from the audience, half of you. Um, so when you're dealing with a graph, you have nodes and edges automatically, and you have methods to add nodes and edges directly. So it's very easy to work with, and it's very Pythonic. So you have a very fantastic abstraction, so you don't have to worry about the internals. Uh, network X is working everything for you. Fine. What are the pros of uh, Network X? Well, it's a reference implementation in Python. It's very well known and popular if you're working in graphs. Uh, many algorithms already provided and is well documented and is nice to read. And is great for small graphs. What's the cons, though? It's quite slow. It's very slow. And in particular, if you compare the performance here, uh, this graph, in the, other, the other kind of graph, uh, sorry, probably is not entirely readable. Um, the, the green line here is SciPy sparse. Uh, the blue one is Network X, and the red one is NumPy. So SciPy sparse is certainly the faster, um, at, at increasing the size of the graph. But um, and, uh, Network X is certainly not the slower, as the slowest is slower. Uh, uh, is lower than NumPy up until some point because NumPy mm, diverges because. NumPy uh, doesn't have any notion of sparsity, so NumPy 
store it, stores everything in memory. So that's, that's where the difference comes from. But nonetheless, um, network X is certainly slow, and you can't actually use it uh, for small graphs. So what if we would still be using network X and all the advantages of using network X? Because network X, again, provides abstractions, very easy to use from Python, and algorithms already implemented. We don't have to reinvent any wheel. But we can still have network X um, pros retaining all the pros, but having a faster sparse alg graph algorithms. In particular, what we're looking for is a foundational sparse graphs library that is fast, flexible, scalable, and runs on any architecture. To be completely clear, SciPy also provides a package within the sparse uh, package, uh, which is a CS graph. You have already, so the, the sparse matrices I told you earlier, they do come with algorithms already, so they're not just like uh, data structures. You can also do graph operations on them. So this notion of using sparse matrices for graph problems is still, uh, is indeed um, a very practical um, case. So you have connected component, uh, shortest path, the, the breadth versus order, the, essentially the same algorithms we're talking here. The problem is, and I tell you immediately, sparse is not that library. It's not the library we're looking for. Um, Cypher sparse is still too slow for what we're talking about. It's single-threaded, first off, and it's not expressive enough. Um, we don't have masking operations that work efficiently. We cannot change operator in matrix multiplication, and I come back to that in a second, what I mean here. And it's too low level. You have no integration with Network X. There's no way you can have the two, the two talking to each other. And also um, has some what is technically called format gymnastic. So you have to work out different formats to work with it. So depending on what you're doing, CSR rather than uh, CO. And last but not least, is not yet hardware or implementation agnostic. OK. so. Let's um, think about this. Graph problems can um, um, indeed be expressed as past linear algebra problem. And I probably convinced you enough already that sparse matrices are the actually way to go for representing a graph, especially when it's sparse. And so with these in mind, let me introduce you a very new project I uh, came up with, I came across um, with recently. It's called Graph Plus. So Graph Plus is exactly what you can uh, imagining to be. It's just plus, but for graphs. Plus is basically in algebra programs. So Graph Plus is indeed a plus version for sparse matrices. Um, in this particular case, graphs are represented, of course, as sparse matrices, and the matrix multiplication is the foundational to all the graph operations. And in particular, everything is expressed as matrix multiplication with the caveat that we can customize the operator. So I'm not gonna go into any details, I would be happy to do it uh, after the talk, but whenever you have to, for example, um, express a single source shortest path, when, when you're doing matrix multiplication, you can replace, uh, you can use uh, min plus as the two operators uh, to use during multi matrix multiplication. It's very, very convoluted. I'm not gonna go much more in details than this, but happy to later on. So just to give you an example, when you have to process incoming edges, you can use sparse matrix times sparse vector. When you have to process outgoing edges, it could be sparse vector times sparse matrix, and this is exactly what you get. To be entirely clear, Graph Blast is not a library, it is a standard. So it's a specification similar to BLAS, and so you have the Arduino architecture here, BLAS or Graph BLAS, and then you have some lay graph or graph analytical apps building on top of it. So this is the full stack we're talking here. And so how do we transition from Graph BLAS to Network X? It is very possible. Graph BLAS is the MAT specification. There exists the C API of Graph BLAS. Then there is the suits pass Graph BLAS C implementation. And to be, uh, to be um, clear, this specification was created, uh, as far as I know, um, when 
as a library to support sparse metric operations in MATLAB. This is where this comes from. What we're talking here, and that's why I'm presenting this to the, to the uh, uh, EuroPython audience, is because you can use this library in Python as well. And there's Python graph blasts and graph blast algorithms, which connect ultimately to NetworkX via dispatching, and I'll talk about it in a second. So, um, more in details, having this NetworkX connection, essentially through graph blast algorithms and Python graph blasts, we can target even multiple architectures. So you have an abstractions working on top, and depending on what is your architecture here, you can have CPU, you can have dask arrays, you can have GPU, uh, you can also plug in um, CoGraph, which goes directly to the GPU and dask. So NetworkX has this advantage through the dispatching method. So l looking internally at the, at the stack, so GraphBlast is a pseudocode, is just the math specification, this is what we're talking here. The C specification is this level of details, and there is an implementation to this specification called suit sparse graph blast. And as I was saying, it, MATLAB uses it for sparse matrix multiplication. And it's based on OpenMP for parallel operation. And every single format we mentioned before is supported in this, in, in this uh, implementation. Python graph blast is a project which is currently open source project. You can install via pip or conda uh, in uh, conda forge. Uh, um, jointly developed by um, some of my colleagues, uh, Jimmy Kitchen and Anna Conda and Eric Welch at NVIDIA. Um, and uh, it essentially provides a Pythonic implementation to the C um, uh, specification. Graph plus algorithm is, so this is in some sense the low level Python here. Uh, this is the general algorithms, uh, similar to uh, the network X algorithms. So these are the algorithms that essentially implement the plug to uh, network X. Currently implement more than 80 algorithms, but the project is open source, and please provide a pull request if you have algorithms that you can't find there and you want them to implement. They would be more than happy to do it. And network X finally is on top, so you can call it as you would normally do, on your graph, and thanks to the dispatching method, it goes down here using graph blast. I'll show you an example in a second. This is how the dispatching works. So network X provide some of the methods, for example, shortest path. They do have a decorator, which is nx.dispatch. If those methods have this um, decorator in place, it means that the dispatching method for that, for that algorithm is available. And so NetworkX automatically figures out whatever is the library that should be called uh, underneath. So just to, to give you a, a concrete example here, um, we are using, uh, we're, uh, sorry, this is a typo here, but we are generating a random graph with a very low probability of connectivity, so it's a very sparse, 10,000 nodes, and this is, uh, oh sorry, um, this has been updated, sorry, I should update the slide, it's 10,000 nodes, and, um, more edges, uh, apparently. Sorry about that. Um, if we try to list all the pairs shortest path in that graph, network X way, it takes 32 seconds. We have to sl slightly adjust our code to use graph plus algorithms. We just have to import graph plus here. We do um, convert the, the network X graph to uh, network, um, graph plus network X. Uh, graph through utility function in, included in graph plus algorithm, and we pass to network X method directly the GBLS graph. So nothing changes but the input of the graph. This, uh, so the conversion takes more or less 8,400 milliseconds on my laptop, and the whole e um, execution here takes 3.4 seconds, 10 times faster. Uh, there's actually a benchmark of all the um, changing the sizes, changing the different graph, and changing also the algorithms, uh, comparing um, using network X as a baseline, and so um, graph blast versus uh, network X, and also a speed up against iGraph. And if you're working with graph, iGraph is probably one, one of the most popular library available uh, nowadays for network analysis. So um, to briefly uh, recap what we're talking about, um, graph plus API specification at the bottom of this stack, 
suits pass graph blast is a C plus open MP implementation. Um, Python suits pass graph blast is the, what is in the middle. Uh, CFFI plus Cyton. Python graph blast is pure Python. Graph blast algorithm is pure Python and provides a uh, connection to um, uh, network X. Multiple formats are supported. Um, highly tuned matrix multiplication uh, kernels, and you have no import or copy lag, and GPU support is forthcoming. So, um, key messages, DD is very cool. Network X is amazing, even if it's slow. Uh, graph Blast uses past linear algebra to solve graph problems, mathematically elegant and blazing fast. If you're interested in all the very details of that, I would be happy to talk about it. Network X can become the graph Python, the graph API for Python, similar to what NumPy does, because at the end of the day, we have a fantastic API which goes very slow, so essentially, Network X says, I can demand the workload to whoever goes faster than I do. And that's all I had. Thank you very much. Thanks for the amazing talk, Valerio. Uh, if you want to ask any question, you can use the mic. I know lunch is coming. Okay. Go ahead. Hello. Hi. So, first question, what is your favorite D&D class and why is it a wizard? I know, um, yeah. I, I, I've always been a wizard, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks for the question. Yeah, but I also have another question. So, in the example you have showcased, you have uh, created a dense graph with network X and then converted it to sparse. Is there any way for these graph blasts uh, on the Python layer to load uh, a sparse uh, graph directly from uh, disk or whatever? Um, so you mean loading the graph in Network X from disk? Uh, not, not in Network X, because Network X deals in the dense format by default, but in the graph blast uh, Python library. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. So I, the example I had was like showcasing how you can use Network X algorithms uh, directly. So this is why I, I, I went through Network X. But you can use um, Graph Blast entirely uh, using their API. What is what was happening here? Um, I was trying to just think if I had um, examples. I had a few backup slides, but no, not what what you had in mind. Um, yeah, yeah. On, uh, so th in this case, essentially, I'm not use I'm just using this graph algorithms uh, utility conversion from mm -hmm. Network X, and you can also convert it the other way. So from from uh, from Network X to Graph Blast in case. Um, and this is graph algorithms. Um, Py Python graph blasts, which is what is underneath in the stack, has, the, has their own data types, matrix and vectors. So you can use them directly to represent the graph. You can do that. Um, it's just a lower level. So probably you would go, uh, it's preferably going from network X because it's, you already have the algorithms, but it's not, not necessarily the only way, if that's what you meant. Yeah, uh, okay, I meant, uh, is it possible to entirely deal in sparse graphs without uh, having a dense, grants, uh, a, a dense graph as an intermediate step, but yeah. Yes, exactly, so Python Graph Plus only talks sparse graph. And okay. that's a very Thank good you. question. That's exactly a very good question, because if you're not dealing with a sparse graph, um, Graph Plus at the end of the day is no different in performance than what Network X is when you're using this sort of breach. Uh, it's, it's the same performance. You, you start appreciating the performance when you have sparsity in your graph. Yes, that's a very good question. One question that... Uh, Thank you. ...have uh, some cases when still I graph is better than this one in... Um, we can look at the performance, actually. And um, this is... So, for example... Um, PageRank works better on this particular networks. Um, I, 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 I have no specific clues about these benchmarks, but these data sets uh, and these results are public, and core devs are very lovely people, so if you're very interested in that, um, you, you can, you, there's, a, there's a whole section, I, I can remember, there's a no issue 
in the graph algorithms repository talking about this benchmark. So I can probably send you the link. I should have put a link there. Um, I can add the link maybe when I share the slides. Thank you. No worries. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, Hi. One question on the need for dispatching to network X. Sure. I mean, if the, if the algorithms are getting re-implemented, at least 80 plus of them are re-implemented in uh, the Python uh, package, then what advantage does it bring us to dispatch them to network X again? Um, you don't dispatch back to network X. You dispatch from network X. So um, what I mean is, this is what happens. So if you, um, I, the, so essentially, graph algorithms has a similar interface to single source shortest path than network XRs. And what you do, you, you, from, the low, from the top level, you just use network X. And this being dispatched internally to graph plus, because the G type here is a graph plus algorithm, sorry, is a, yes, it's a graph plus graph data structure, so Network X knows exactly how, uh, how it works. Um, um, I had a slide, I forgot to add it, um, in how the dispatching method works internally. Uh, so um, I, I can't, it's difficult with, to explain with that example, but I promise you, these two are interconnected automatically. You don't have to do anything. Um, what, it, what changes here in this internal implementation is that it, it's user, it uses Python graph plus rather than Network X implementation. And this is the kind of uh, code we're talking about. This is Python graph plus. So for example, the single source shortest path, uh, even if it's barely unreadable, sorry about that. This is the, the whole implementation of, of, of the operation. It's very compact and is, 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 is very, um, it, it, it's in, it should be easier to read, uh, but it's very compact. So you really have to understand what's going on. That's why graph algorithms on top exist. The, this works because of how graph plus works. Uh, so transforming uh, using the min plus semi, semi ring and blah, blah, blah. This is um, very, very nitty gritty detail. Um, but um, this is Py Python graph plus uh, code mm -hmm. abstracted from graph uh, plus algorithms. Okay, so one quick follow up question. So mm -hmm. say I'm using, I'm an end user, I need ABC algorithms mm -hmm. on graph. Mm -hmm. uh, I can just stop at the graph plus Python layer, right? I don't need to. You layer. can, you can. Um, uh, it means that you're essentially, uh, yes, you can. You can totally can. Um, the thing is, um, you can go back and forth in Network X. Mm -hmm. And if your program already runs on Network X, you can plug in with just two lines of code. Graph plus. This is probably a good way to explain it. So it's totally true what you said, as in you can use graph plus algorithms on their own without going through network X at all. But if you if you were going through network X, uh, you can plug in, you can speed up your code by just adding these two lines. I see. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I think that's thanks. it. Thanks again, Valerie. Thank you very much, all of you.